When it comes to size and spectacle, the peak of the space age passed in 1973 with the final flight of the Saturn V rocket that had carried the Apollo astronauts to the moon. Its first flight in 1967 provoked Walter Cronkite, an American news anchor reporting far from the pad to exclaim. Half a century later, nothing as powerful has reached orbit since. But in a Texas hamlet, a couple of miles from the Kennedy Space Center, SpaceX, a rocketry firm founded by Elon Musk, is developing a machine that it hopes will change that. The Starship launch schedule has changed. However, it still remains very close. The Starship closures listed for Monday and Tuesday the 13th and 14th respectively are gone. At this moment, this rocket being launched into orbit is increasingly highlighting its importance more than we think, even surpassing NASA. Why Starship first reaching orbit is even more important than NASA thinks. Stay tuned as we dive into this in today's episode. Hello everyone, welcome back to another episode of my channel. St Built from gleaming stainless steel with its nose adorned with fins and 10 meters tall than even the Saturn V, Starship looks like something from the cover of a 1950s pulp science fiction magazine. Its planned payload of up to over 180 tons means that five Starship flights could put more stuff into space than the rest of the world managed with 135 rocket launches in 2021. Its upper stage contains more pressurized volume than the International Space Station, which took a decade, dozens of launches, and perhaps $100 billion to assemble. But it's not just the size that matters. When a Saturn V took off to send men to the moon, the only bit of the 2,800 tons of hardware that came back was a cramped 5-ton capsule with three men inside. Each new mission meant a new Saturn V. With Starship, the idea is that all the hardware will come back. The massive booster stage almost immediately, the second orbital stage after fulfilling whatever mission it had been sent on. At a press event in February 2022 to show off an assembled rocket, Elon Musk reiterated his reasons for founding SpaceX. To buy humanity an insurance policy against existential risks by establishing a colony on Mars. Starship is designed to transport a million tons of supplies he thinks are needed for that job. Roughly a hundred times more mass than has been launched since the start of the space age. To that end, it's designed to be not only the biggest rocket ever built, but also the cheapest. With all these advantages, Starship is indeed a milestone in human history. When Starship reaches orbit, it essentially raises the question of the path forward for the United States. It's not an exaggeration to say that Starship should be placed at the center of the country's human space exploration program, even before it reaches orbit. SpaceX has an iterative, rapid-fire, startup-style culture very different from that of older aerospace firms. Mr. Musk's development philosophy is that if things aren't failing, you're not innovating enough. The firm mixes high-tech bespoke design in some areas such as the Raptor engines. With a make-do-and-mend attitude elsewhere, some super-heavy prototypes have fins controlled by electric motors taken from cars made by Tesla. One good example is the rocket's stainless steel construction. Starship was originally going to be built from the high-tech carbon fiber composites, which are both very strong and very light. But in 2019, despite having produced several big components, SpaceX went back to the drawing board. Carbon composites, it turns out, have several disadvantages. They're porous, fiddly to work with, and need to be cured in an autoclave. Not easy when making rocket body segments that are 9 meters across. And at around 130 bucks a kilogram, composites are expensive. Stainless steel, by contrast, is strong. However, other rocket companies are hesitant to manufacture their rockets with stainless steel because it's heavy, and the heavier your actual rocket, the less payload you can carry to space on the same fuel tank. Instead, the outer frames of most rockets are made from sturdy, yet lightweight metals like aluminum and titanium. However, SpaceX has researched and discovered that some steel alloys get significantly stronger as they cool down, meaning less is required for a given strength. And since Starship uses cryogenic propellant, cooling is an abundant supply. Steel is tougher, too, which can save weight elsewhere. Stainless steel doesn't need painting, which reduces weight. It's much easier to work with and costs mere dollars per kilogram. For a company that intends to mass-produce its rocket, says Simon Potter at Bryce Tech, a firm of space industry analysts, that matters. Truth be told, few rocket companies can pull off feats like Elon Musk's SpaceX. A cheap, big, reusable rocket has been a dream of space cadets for decades. But Starship fulfills it, at least on paper. 
you almost get to a point where launch costs would go away entirely as a consideration, says Mr. Potter. However, you can achieve even more with those capabilities. Jonathan McDowell, an astrophysicist and rocket enthusiast at the Harvard-Smithsonian Center for Astrophysics, notes that Starship's colossal size might go unused in the commercial satellite market, at least for the foreseeable future. There just isn't currently a market for large numbers of enormous payloads, he says. SpaceX's Falcon Heavy, with a payload capacity of 64 tons, is the most powerful rocket currently flying. However, with robust development and a prioritized focus on space today, the satellite industry might adapt in time. In any case, Musk has indicated that Starship, thanks to its cheapness, will replace SpaceX's smaller Falcon rockets, which already have a market share of around 50%. If he sticks to that plan, then early commercial launches of Starship could fly with their holds mostly empty. Take, for example, SpaceX's plans to deploy 400 Starlink satellites into orbit with each launch on Starship, where a significant portion of the cost is just the launch fuel. Who could compete with that? All the existing expendable rockets worldwide simply won't be able to compete with Starship. And those companies are countries that seek to develop fully reusable rockets are years behind SpaceX, and will find SpaceX will have moved well forward by the time their competitors achieve full reusability. It's hard to catch a target that's both ahead of you and accelerating away. They only have a possible closure on the 15th. According to the updated notice to Mariners or Notmar, posted yesterday, also said that Starship launch is now officially no earlier than November 15th. This is most likely due to unfavorable launch weather forecast on November 13th and the 14th. The Coast Guard notice issued for the South Texas area near Boca Chica Beach outlines scheduled rocket launching operations, warning boaters to steer clear of the designated hazard area along the flight path. On November 15th of 2023, between 5.25 a.m. and 11 to 10 a.m., rocket launching operations are scheduled to take place near Boca Chica Beach, Texas. Backup launch dates and times include each day following November 15 of 2023 between 5.25 a.m. and 11 to 10 a.m. until conditions permit the launch. Mariners operating offshore in waters east of Brownsville, Texas are advised of the scheduled rocket launching activities and associated hazardous areas, which may impact navigation interests. Mariners should avoid all waters within rocket flight trajectories originating from launch sites in the vicinity of Boca Chica and Brownsville, Texas. Rocket launching operations high-risk areas will be bound by the following approximate positions, the U.S. Coast Guard notice states. Although 100% certainty is impossible, SpaceX's Benji Reed also confirms during the CRS-29 briefing that the next Starship launch attempt is still on track for mid-November, so very soon. Besides that, an NOTAM has been posted for Mexican airspace for the next launch of SpaceX's Starship rocket. The notice is valid from November 13 to the 18th with daily windows running from 7 a.m. Central Standard Time to 9.39 a.m. Central Standard Time. However, it's important to note that this potential launch time frame is subject to change and the company has not yet confirmed an official launch date. SpaceX remains subject to stringent regulatory requirements encompassing safety, environmental concerns, and other prerequisites essential for FWS approval. Once the review is completed, which may occur this week, SpaceX will be granted its FAA launch license. Subsequently, technicians will proceed to install pyrotechnic charges on the Starship rocket to finalize the activation of its flight termination system. A necessary precaution in case the vehicle deviates from its intended course. Following this, SpaceX will assemble the fully integrated launch vehicle standing at a towering height of nearly 400 feet by stacking the Starship upper stage atop the Super Heavy booster. On the day of launch, SpaceX's teams will load more than 10 million pounds of methane and liquid oxygen into the two-stage rocket. Then it would be time to proceed if all systems and conditions appear satisfactory. Computers will initiate the command to ignite the 33 Raptor engines located at the base of the booster. After a final comprehensive health check, the automated countdown sequencer will grant the green light for liftoff. The end goal of this mission is for Ship 25, also known as Starship or the Upper Stage, to successfully re-enter the atmosphere and land about 100 kilometers or 62 miles off the coast of Kauai, Hawaii. Kauai is an island in the Hawaiian Islands chain located in the Pacific Ocean. Currently, there is no known payload on Ship 25. After stage separation, Booster 9 will perform a boost back burn and attempt a soft water landing in the Gulf of Mexico.
if ship 25 makes it to re-entry, it will not attempt a soft water landing, meaning it will not splash down under the power of engines. This achievement would signify the successful operation of nearly all components on the massive Starship rocket. Encompassing the engines on both the booster and upper stage, an innovative approach for separating the booster from the upper stage, a newly designed steering system, the application of Starship ceramic heat shield tiles for re-entry protection, as well as the utilization of intricate guidance, navigation, and control algorithms. Recently, posted exclusion zones and other notices give a greater indication of the trajectory that Starship will take. It will fly slightly south of east just over the northern tip of Cuba. Starship will then travel across the southern Atlantic Ocean and pass over Namibia before traveling over the Indian Ocean. The final piece of land Starship is expected to pass over is Indonesia before heading out over the Pacific Ocean and re-entering near Hawaii. The closest in-person viewing point is expected to be on South Padre Island about 8 kilometers away. Despite uncertainties in the exact dimensions of the exclusion zone, it will certainly be large due to the size of the Starship slash Super Heavy and the fact that it is an unproven rocket. SpaceX is also expected to have an official live stream on X.com, so let's all get ready to have the best position to enjoy the event. SpaceX has been given the go-ahead to launch its 29th cargo mission to the International Space Station today, November 9th. NASA and SpaceX teams completed a launch readiness review on Wednesday, November 8th for the CRS-29 mission, which will send a Dragon capsule to the International Space Station. Everything went well with the review, so the CRS-29 launch remains on target for today. If all goes according to plan, the Dragon will lift off atop a Falcon 9 rocket from NASA's Kennedy Space Center in Florida at 8.28 p.m. Eastern. If all goes according to plan, the Dragon will arrive at the ISS around 5.28 a.m. Eastern on Saturday, November 11th. As its name suggests, CRS-29 is the 29th robotic resupply mission that SpaceX will fly to the orbiting left for NASA. Dragon is carrying up more than 2,950 kilograms of supplies and scientific hardware on this run including NASA's AWE or AWE and Illimate experiments. All will study gravity waves disturbances in Earth's atmosphere akin to the waves created when a pebble plunks into a pond. Gravity waves are very different from gravitational waves, which are ripples in the fabric of space-time caused by the acceleration of massive objects, such as black holes and neutron stars. Illimate will test high-speed communications in collaboration with NASA's Laser Communications Relay Demonstration, or LCRD, mission, which launched in December of 2021. After Illimate is installed on the exterior of the ISS and checked out, it will begin tracking and communicating with LCRD, a ride-along instrument on a U.S. Department of Defense satellite that resides in geosynchronous orbit, more than 35,400 kilometers above the Earth. The ISS, by contrast, circles at an average altitude of about 400 kilometers. Together, Illimate and LCRD will create NASA's first two-way laser communications relay system. Agency officials wrote in an overview of CRS-29 science gear. Laser communications can supplement the radio frequency systems that most space-based missions currently use to send data to and from Earth, they added. The Illimate demonstration also paves the way for placing laser communication terminals on spacecraft orbiting the Moon or Mars. The Dragon will also carry up a variety of food on CRS-29, including some seasonal specialties. By the way are you familiar Talk Talk Philippines app? Talk Talk is a delivery service app designed to connect more people by delivering items door-to-door. -door. For more information, download the Talk Talk app, here down below.